welcome to a special bonus episode of New York Public Health Now. This is where we talk about the why so you can help decide what to do. Hi, I'm Dr. Jim McDonald, Commissioner of the New York State Department of Health, coming to you from the 14th floor of the Corning Tower overlooking the Empire State Plaza here in downtown Albany. Joining me as a co-host today is Joanne Moore, and Joanne, who has a lot of experience in today's topic, both as someone who's worked in the community as well as an immediate past director of the AIDS Institute. Joanne, good to see you today. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Dr. McDonald. And we're really grateful for the space uh, of this special episode for the podcast to talk about a topic I am really passionate about. I'm proud to welcome our two colleagues from the AIDS Institute to talk about this year's World AIDS Day, this being the department's 25th annual commemoration, as well as our annual Ending the Epidemic Summit, which starts today, November 28th. But before I continue, let me do some introductions. First, Joe Kerwin, who has served as a director of the AIDS Institute since March of 2023. Joe, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Joanne. It's great to be here. And thank you for giving us space today to talk about some really exciting events that the AIDS Institute is sponsoring this week. That's great. And also joining us today is Stephanie McHugh, who works in the Office of Planning and Community Affairs in the AIDS Institute. Hello, Stephanie. Hello. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Well, Stephanie, it's good to have you here. Joe, it's good to see you as well. It's the start of Ending the Epidemic Summit. It's our eighth annual summit hosted by the New York State Department of Health. It's also the 25th annual commemoration of World AIDS Day by the department, which is really, I think, something very significant and very proud that we do this. This year's event is so big, we needed a larger space, so it's over in the Albany Capital Center for the first time this year. I'm really looking forward to heading down to see the AIDS Memorial Quilt and hear testimonies of lived experiences, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And I'm actually going to be talking at the summit today, so I'm excited about that as well. So, Stephanie, Joe, why don't we just start with, maybe Stephanie, you could do this first. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, please, Stephanie. Sure. Well, again, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, So I've worked at the Department of Health now for about 14 years, believe it or not. Um, I absolutely love this work, and it's a pleasure to be here and work with all of you. Um, I actually was born in Canada. I was born in Toronto, and I moved here when I was in high school with my family. We immigrated here, and I'm a citizen now, so I just wanted to share that about me. Great to have you, Stephanie, and I I do love Toronto. It's it's a beautiful city. It really is. It's gorgeous. Joe, it's good to have you here as well. Joe, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, Native New Yorker, born in Troy, uh, New York. I've been with the health department since... 2011, working in the AIDS Institute, and was appointed director in March of this past year. Served in a variety of capacities within the Institute before then, and also spent over 20 years working in the local community around HIV and AIDS work. All right. Well, let's let's start to talk a bit about uh, these important subjects. Joe, what is ending the epidemic? Thanks for that question, Joanne. So ending the epidemic is how we refer to a Department of Health at AIDS Institute effort in partnership with our community partners, advocates, community providers, um, medical providers, to end the HIV epidemic in New York State. This initiative was started back in 2014, and at that time, we had set the goal to reach the end of the epidemic by 2020. Um, Then COVID came along, and slowed our efforts. And uh, as we know, uh, healthcare um, took a tremendous shift and was about many other things, as were many of our community partners and providers. And so Governor Hochul actually extended the timeline for ending the epidemic to the end of 2024. Just to be clear, when we say ending the epidemic, we're not talking about a single number or one single measure. We're actually looking about six or 18, 16, 18 different factors that will signify we have come to that point in ending the epidemic within the state. HIV won't go away and people living with HIV will not go away by 2024. But we are being specifically focused on making sure people have access to prevention measures and also that people living with HIV in New York State have the best 
access to health care and services that we can possibly offer. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about, I, I recognize certainly that COVID provided a huge challenge in, in the work that's being done across the state, um, but can you talk about maybe one or two accomplishments and then what are some of the continued challenges that we see as it relates to ending the epidemic? Sure. Well, one of the big things that we've accomplished within New York State is our efforts in reducing mother to child transmission of HIV. You know, if we remember back in the early days of the epidemic, among the horrors that happened at that time were babies that were being born with HIV, subsequently AIDS and dying, you know, within days of, of being born. Um, we have in New York State for the past eight years eliminated mother to child transmission of HIV. And we are on track to do that again this year. That is a, a big success. It is a big success. Huge, huge. So that's a big one. Um, also, our ability to get people diagnosed. You know, it's important that people know their HIV status, that they're aware of, you know, their particular health condition. That piece is very important. And we've seen those numbers go up over the course of um, ending the epidemic since 2014. And even more significantly is making sure that people are linked to health care. And so about 87% of people living with HIV in New York State are seeing their doctor right now. And not only are they seeing their doctor, but their HIV virus is so suppressed within their body that they're unable to transmit HIV to other people. You know, one of the things you talked about, which may sound counterintuitive, is we actually want to find cases. In other words, case finding. Yes. In other words, part of why we want to do a lot of testing is because we really want to find people who have HIV because then we can link them to treatment, right? And Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. I'm an old doctor. And I seem to be saying that almost every episode now. I have to think about why I'm doing that. Uh, but it's interesting. You know, what used to be 100% fatal disease is really now become a chronic disease because we've had such wonderful treatment. And, and some of that treatment is really a product of just the way the community has led this. And we've had great community stakeholder input. And Stephanie, I want to just talk to you a little bit about that. Is Maybe could you talk to us a little bit about what has the leadership and input of community stakeholders been like? How have they been helpful to us? Sure. I'll say... Ever since the beginning of ending the epidemic, the ET initiative, community stakeholder input and guidance and partnership has really been at the heart of this initiative. I will say that our work with the AIDS Institute really goes back to the first and early days of the epidemic. Um, it's actually the 40th anniversary right now of the Denver Principles, and I would encourage our listeners if they could go and... It's a short document to look at if you're interested. It really just centers to nothing for us without us. And that really is our mantra. And so from having listening sessions with our community stakeholders, we have advisory groups, we have all sorts of different um, tools for community input so that our plans, our ETE blueprint, our Ending the Epidemic blueprint, which is the strategies that guide our work, is at the heart of it community, community-led, community-driven. So, Joe, listening to that and recognizing the significant role and leadership the community stakeholders have brought, can we go back a little bit? You know, I mean, the role and the presence of stakeholders today is where we started. Let's talk a little bit about what was happening for us in the 80s. Wow, yeah. Those were, uh, those were very dark days. And uh, in those days, in the midst of this kind of emerging horrible syndrome with all these terrible disease conditions that were connected with AIDS at the time, um, when, quote unquote, the establishment, if you will, um, was slow, and, th and that's probably being gentle, was slow to recognize and acknowledge the presence of AIDS in our country and in the world. It was really communities of people who rose up to care for people they loved and for their neighbors, for their community members, for, you know, the people in their building who were who were sick and, and dying alone often, that could have been abandoned by their families. Um, out of all that real horror in the 80s and, and the early 90s grew this very strong and I think in many ways unparalleled spirit of advocacy among um, the AIDS community that 
that built and created and, and pushed systems many systems to to ramp up a response to the epidemic and uh, that really is really what kind of gave birth to what summit the the et summit um will will speak to this week you know and i really think in some ways any of the epidemic is something that i have to admit when i was back in medical school in like in late 1980s keep in mind no antiviral drugs let alone antiretroviral drugs none of these drugs existed and it's really interesting because in many ways, the fact that we can have a conversation about ending the epidemic, I think, speaks a lot about where science took us, but where I think community stakeholders took us. Because one of the things I think about is, and Stephanie, you talked about this earlier, nothing for us without us. But one of the things I remember from the late 80s was just really community, people in the community just talking. You know, we're being ignored and people were being judged. People were being blamed which we don't do that with other diseases. And I think it really gets this issue about how much science and technology brought us, but how much the community brought us where we needed to get to, where we can be talking about ending this epidemic, which I think is an exciting thing to talk about, Mm -hmm. because I love eliminating diseases. And I know we're going to be living with HIV for a while, but like this has gone from a death sentence to a chronic disease and and wonderful treatment available, uh, very safe treatment at that as well. And, you know, one of the things I want to touch base on is you know, I remember the first AIDS quilt being discussed a long time ago, but the ending of the epidemic, the summit today is going to feature a quilt. Can you talk a little bit about the quilt? Because I'm looking forward to seeing the quilt today. Sure, sure. So, yes, we'll have panels from the AIDS quilt on display at summit. And this actually is a tradition within the AIDS Institute that predates even the end in the epidemic summit. We have had World AIDS Day events here at the Empire State Plaza for some years now with uh, AIDS quilt display, and we used it as an educational tool. We brought young people in and educated them about HIV prevention and education. And the quilt memorializes, again, from from the community roots, um, individuals who have died of AIDS over the course of the epidemic. And uh, there is a local chapter uh, of the I'm not going to get the name of the organization right, but the AIDS Memorial Quilt um, in our local chapter is housed here at the Albany Damien Center, and they're facilitating um, presenting the quilt for display at Summit uh, during this week. And not everybody will be able to be at the Summit, of course, but there's a a link, a web page to this. Can you tell me what is the web address and why is this web address important? Uh, The web address is important because you can actually go and, and see the quilt panels themselves. You also can look up individuals that you may know who have a quilt within the display and enter their name and actually see their actual panel if you've not seen it up to now. And we have the address. Yeah, so that's good. I can actually look up someone's name on the panel. But the web address, as I understand it, is aidsmemorial.org forward slash interactive dash aids dash quilt. So the web address is aidsmemorial.org forward slash interactive dash aids dash quilt so we talked about about the summit and you know i i want i'm gonna ask that you indulge me for just a moment uh as we're talking about the community stakeholders and we're talking about how much we have advanced in our understanding and in our ability uh as far as uh prevention as well as care i i want to say that through my years of working um in in the community uh there have been many moments that gave me pause but there's one specific moment that I want to offer to all of our listeners so you can visualize what we're saying. The Ending the Epidemic Blueprint, which is a set of recommendations as to how we would advance and achieve our goals, was being presented in New York City, and that was in April of 2014. And when I looked out on the crowd, what struck me was that so many of the community stakeholders who 30 plus years ago were on the front lines of making sure that people gained access to antiretrovirals, to care, and to dignity were the same individuals that were standing there that day in front of the LGBT center. And that struck me because these individuals, upon their own diagnosis, were told they were being given a death sentence. And here we are, collectively working to end this epidemic. So I hope that visual really sort of gives a a sense of how much we have advanced and how much opportunity we have to work together in partnership to continue to elevate and move forward with our goals. So 
I'm going to ask just uh, one last question. Any any thoughts as far as anything else that the community and, and, and others need to know as it relates to the work that you're doing on a daily basis and the gathering that we're, we're hosting today? I mean, I, I'm going to make a quick comment and then invite Stephanie to do the same. We, we've not mentioned uh, the challenges that we continue to face. And I, I want to note for our audience that uh, among, among the successes in reaching our ending the epidemic goals, we're also very aware that we're not reaching all communities to the same degree and that the impact of health disparities among particular populations across the, U, the, the state uh, remain a challenge for us in achieving these goals. And we at the health department at the AIDS Institute are, are focusing our efforts in these uh, wind down years of kind of the initiative of ending the epidemic of really focusing on those communities, BIPOC communities, black and brown individuals across the state and ensuring that we reach them equally in our in our with our energies and our initiative and i'll just end with the ending the epidemic summit and world aids day events is truly a collaborative effort with our community partners with those who are living with the disease peer workers to physicians to nurses all across the state this is an event that was actually asked for by community and is actually specified as a strategy in the Ending the Epidemic blueprint that you mentioned, Joanne. And uh, going along again, this year's theme of the event is family reunion. Together we adapt and thrive. And we didn't get to this point, as you've all mentioned already, without community. And through medications, through our work together, we're at this point where we're talking about living with this disease and thriving, and it's absolutely amazing to witness. I love the theme of this year's event. You know, family reunion, together we adapt and thrive. I mean, there is a message there for outside of this community to the entire country, quite frankly, uh, because we are in much of this together. And I really do think it's just, it's wonderful that we can talk about ending this epidemic. I just think it's a great thing that we can do this. So we're wrapping up this special bonus episode of New York Public Health Now. I want to thank Joe for joining us. Thank you, Joe. Good to have you today. Good to be here. Stephanie, it was good to have you as well. Thank you. So, my friends, if you have a suggestion for topics we should talk about on New York Public Health Now podcast, please let us know by email. Podcast at health.ny.gov. Keep an eye out for the latest New York Public Health Now episode on your favorite podcast player like Apple Podcasts. Overcast, Spotify, YouTube, and Google Podcasts. Search by our podcast title, New York Public Health Now, or by keyword NYSDOH. And hit the subscribe or follow button to be notified when we release a new episode, which comes about every other week. We'll resume our regular scheduled episodes next week with what I'm sure will be a very lively roundtable discussion about cybersecurity and the nation-leading initiatives New York State is taking to help hospitals protect health information so we can help protect patients. I hope you'll join us. For New York Public Health Now podcast, I'm Dr. Jim McDonough, Commissioner of the New York State Department of Health. I'm Joanne Morin. I'm Joe Kerwin. And I'm Stephanie McHugh. And thank you for listening. <laughs>